Alright folks, alright, so the World Cup. The World Cup is on right now. South Africa. Just finished the first round of games and here's my one word review of the tournament so far. Balls. Total fucking balls, you know? What's the deal? It's the most boring pile of shit. It's showing up football for what it actually is, you know? A bunch of jumped up fucking overpaid fannies running about a piece of ground. They fuck all but fucking fall down every two seconds and the referee with their whistle stopping the game all the time. Let's get rid of the referee. Let's just make it fucking chuck a ball in the middle and let's go to war and win some fucking football game here and score some goals. You get what I mean? It's so boring. Everyone's going about the ball. They're all blaming this new ball, you know. Well, here's, an, here's a mental concept. I've got a great idea how to solve the problem with this new ball, right? Here's how you solve the problem. Use the fucking old balls, alright? I'm sure there must be some of them kicking around, you know? Why don't you go up the high street and, I don't know, Sports R Us, whatever the, the names of the shops are. I'm sure there's a few old ones kicking the boot in there. Even in South Africa, I'm sure they've got sports shops. Grab a ball. Kick that ball, hey this is a bit better, it feels like a real football, use that, but no, because FIFA are in bed with Adidas, aren't they? They've got a wee contract going, FIFA and Adidas, so they're in bed fellows, so there's a contract, so again it comes down to what's more important ladies and gentlemen, is it the football? No, it's all about business really, isn't it? It's not about entertaining the people and caring even for the players what's best, you know, entertaining the crowd. People are supposed to be entertaining, but no, it's about making money, so they can't just change the ball. They can't just go and grab a Nike ball, which is ten times better, even though, cross my heart, hope to die, I've just praised Nike there against Satan's company himself, you know. So anyway, that's my idea. Change the balls, and then they can make excuses for about the balls, and then... There will still be shit anyway, it will still be a pile of crap, you know? Because I'm trying to wean myself off football, it's taken a long time, I'm still watching it now and again, you know? Because, uh, I mean, I was brought up watching the Edinburgh Highbees, aye, the Edinburgh Highbees, Hibernian. Has anyone ever heard of them? No, not many people have, you know? They're not that well known outside of Scotland, and even in Scotland, not many people have heard of them either. Uh, when I supported them, they were pretty shite actually, they were pretty shite and they're no much better now to be honest with you. Actually I blame my dad, I blame my dad, I do, for the fact that I'm a Hibs supporter, aye. Because when I was younger I wanted to support Real Madrid, I did, aye. But my dad, right, he point blank refused to take me to the Bernabeu Stadium every other Saturday you can. Fucking cheapskate, he's always been a cheapskate, my dad, you can. Mind you, saying that EasyJet wasn't invented in those days, so I suppose uh, it would have been quite expensive to take me to the Bernabeu Stadium, you know? Uh, so that's fair enough. But he managed to brainwash me into becoming a hip supporter by saying, he said to me, You can watch son, you can watch son. He said, You didn't want to support Real Madrid. They win all the time. <laughs> and you need to learn that life's not like that. Come on Easter Road with me and watch the Edinburgh Highbees. <laughs> and then you can be a loser just like me. <laughs> thanks very much, Peter. Thanks very much. In retrospect, though, uh, I'm quite glad that I didn't, I didn't end up supporting the Madrid because they're a bunch of fascist wankers. <laughs> I've learned my history you now. In those days, I was blinded by the fact that they'd won five European Cups and all the rest of it. So, what else can I say? I used to love, actually, when I was a wee boy, you can, I used to love, I used to love going to watch the football with my dad. Because I was allowed to swear in front of him for the first time, you know? And it was all legal and above board. I was like, hey, dad, hey, dad. See that number four, that number four, aye, aye? He's a big bloody animal. <laughs> isn't he, Dad? Isn't he? He's just a big bloody animal. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't going to call the number four uh, what my dad had just called the referee. <laughs> that would have been suicidal in my behalf, you know? I'm not that daft. 
But my dad, my dad was as proud as punch. He was proud as punch. It was like that Falkhorn Leghorn character that's going, That's my boy, that's my boy. <laughs> just, just did not tell your mum I said you could uh, come away with that kind of power, you know? Just that's, I was like, I need bother. Nay bother. Us men need to stick together. That's just between me and you. We're football buddies now. Football. You can see bloody animals, nay bother. So a couple of weeks later, I'd actually have gotten a bit more brave in front of my dad. Aye. Gets home after the game. My mother's like, well, son, did you enjoy the game? I was like, oh, ma, it was fucking superb. Aye. We stuffed the jambos 2-1. Aye. Apart from that, though, the referee's a bit of a blind bastard, but apart from that, it was fucking magic. <laughs> aye. My mother was like, what? 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 Where did... Where did they get language like that from? <laughs> my dad was like, well, he didn't get to fucking me. <laughs> I didn't get where the fuck the land they go off, but it wasn't be fucking me. Must have been for those heart supporters. Bloody animals. They're just big, bloody animals. I and uh, when I went to the football with my dad, my dad's friends, I was there with my dad's friends, you know, and they would always kind of reinforce my dad's brainwashing to a massive level, you know, to kind of get deeply in there. I'm sure there's some kind of Freemasonic club or something like that, because they were like, Aye, son, aye, aye. You've picked a good team to support here, son. You've picked a fine team. This team has got a fine tradition and an awesome history, an awesome history, aye. Like the time we last won the Scottish Cup in 1902. <laughs> Fine history, fine history, sounds more like ancient history to me, okay? And no matter, I don't know, how well the manager is doing in these guys, I noticed that Simon Smith has got, no matter how well the manager is doing, the fans that go there are never, ever satisfied, they're never satisfied. Like you say, oh this new manager, this new manager, he's unreal, he's unreal, he's not getting the team to play in the traditional traditional method that we're used to in this club. You can there's no playing in the style where we've become accustomed to over the years. He's got them trying to play good football. <laughs> What's that all about? What's that all about? Can we like to fucking hump it up the park? None of this fucking fancy foreign pish you can. So eventually all the fans got their way and they got rid of the manager and they got a new manager in who reverted to the long ball tactics and then the fans are like, oh for God's sake, for God's sake, you can. It's a long ball every time, it's a long ball, no real, no real. They purely just go there to moan their tits off, you know, they can't get any other release from it. They go to work all week, get stressed up to the max and it's purely just go there to what that's why People that support teams like Hibs and that, they didn't want their team to win, otherwise they'd have fuck all to complain about, basically, you know. <sighs> when I was 16, actually, it was the first time up until then I used to always get taken with, with my dad or whatever, and when I was 16, I thought it would be a great idea to buy a season ticket for Easter Road. I actually got, I was supposed to pay adult fare, but I was 16, so I said I was 15, and I got it for the junior price, you know, and in those days, it was actually 24 quid a game, so I was still paying 12 quid a game, which is fucking daily robbery in anyone's eyes, that the Christ knows what they're paying now, but it's fucking way too much, I can assure you that. That's when the kind of, the question of kind of value for money kind of raised this ugly head, you know, because I'm going there every week going, fucking hell. 12 quid for this fucking pish again, how, how the hell am I going to get through a full season of this? And uh, I did though, because I'm Scottish and I had to get my money's worth, but it was fucking hell on earth, let me tell you. I actually stopped going, basically, it got to the time I stopped going because I didn't actually necessarily want to win all the time, you know, I didn't want to win, I, I didn't have dreams of being a Real Madrid supporter, you know, we've got to win, etc, etc. I would just like to see a teammate be able to pass the ball five yards to another teammate, you get what I'm saying? That's not too much to ask, is it? Fucking, I could do that when I was six! How can these professional players not do that? Regardless of what kind of fucking bother you I could do that tennis ball! But football fans are a strange breed of people, aren't they? They're very strange, you know. For instance, the ones in Scotland, right? They wear scarves and they drink bovril, right? Now that's strange enough, drinking bovril. They didn't drink bovril any other time of the year. Some, or any other place, actually. 
But in Scotland, when they go to a football game, you've got to have a bovril, you know, and a mince pie as well, you can. So you have a scarf, a bovril, a mince pie, and you're a happy-go-lucky character. And they do that in the middle of summertime, fair play in Scotland, they didn't get much summer, summers, but you can, it's a little bit sunny day, they've still got their scarves and their bovril. But then in the middle of winter time, some of them didn't even wear a t-shirt. <laughs> it's like, oh, check me out, man, check me out, look at this. I'm turning blue, I'm turning blue, fuck it, what do you think of that, you can? It's unreal, the ones in Newcastle actually are, are the worst for that, I don't know what the hell they're thinking about. In fucking Baltic conditions, let it all, mind you, those ones in Newcastle have got quite a bit of uh, whale fat on them, you know, they're, they know exactly the skinny types they get their Newcastle top off, it's a big fucking heifers with a big pair of mantits and all that, so that's fair enough, I suppose, they didn't feel the cold right enough. So, aye, uh, but... The ones in Scotland are very strange as well, because they always carry a big handful of loose coins. There's always a big handful of loose coins in the pocket, just in case, you know, just in case a dodgy referee turns up. Because <laughs> a dodgy referee, by the way, is any referee who gives more than two decisions against your team, you know. It doesn't matter if your centre-half just paralysed their centre-forward for the fucking neck doon, you know. It's like, oh, for fuck's sake, for fuck's sake, referee, fuck's sake, and you know, buying that one, are you? Come on, he's play-acting, he's obviously fucking play-acting. Hi, that's fake blood. That's fake blood. I'm telling you, it's got one of those capsules for the local joke shop there, and it's fucking carried on. I'm not believing this. Here they take some of this. Fuck off. Bing! That's no fake blood. That's real blood, because I've just binged you with my 50p coin. Get it up, yeah. Hi. Because there's that classic picture. It's one of the best pictures. Sometimes I just go on the internet just for a laugh and look at it. Hugh Dallas, check it out, out folks, Hugh Dallas, Rangers v Celtic, fucking, because let's face it, Scottish football is run by Protestant Freemasons, you can, so, no wonder Celtic fans get aggrieved from time to time, but let's get another thing on the line here as well, by the way, Celtic get all the decisions when they're playing against everybody else, so it's no good, could them bleed in the fact that they're going to get a decision against Rangers, because they... The other team gets a decision against them. So what goes around comes around. Unless you're Rangers, obviously, then it just fucking goes around all the time and you're the fucking ones that get all the decisions. Ha <laughs> ha! Apparently it's a bit like Man United, you can, in England, because when does anyone ever get a penalty at Old Trafford? Is what everybody says, and I wouldn't fucking get on the wrong side of Fergie myself, so the referees, there's not so much Freemasons there, it's just then he fuck with Fergie philosophy. <laughs> so, do you ever stop to ask yourself, ladies and gentlemen, what exactly is this football lack all about? What is it all about? Where did it originate from? I basically think football, right, is just an excuse for grown men to cuddle each other. That's what it is. These guys they're starved of affection. They can't get love anywhere else in their lives. So they have to wait for a ball to go between two sticks before jumping all over each other and shoving their tongues down each other's throats. Oh, we've scored, we've scored, come here, George. Ah, we've scored a goal, ah, come here, fucking take out the arse, George. We've scored, we've scored, get it up, yeah. You know? I'm talking about the fans, by the way, I'm talking about the fans, although obviously the players do enjoy more than their fair share of homosexual liaisons, you know? Not that there's anything wrong with that, let me just put that in the line, it's just let's not kid ourselves on, it's all about a ball going between a pair of fucking sticks, you know? That's why they all make that sound, isn't it? They all make that sound any time the ball goes anywhere near the goals, you know? It's like, oh! Oh, is that orgasmic? Oh, damn! Nearly got a cuddle there, you know? If he had just got his head over the ball and kept his shot on target, instead of hitting the fucking corner flag, I could be making love to Jimmy right now, you know? I'm sure he took his t-shirt off for my benefit. Hi, He's a lovely shade of pale blue today. So he is, so he is, aye. To be honest, I've actually done a fair bit of research into this that um, conclusively proves what I'm talking about, that fans are in fact, you know, homosexuals in waiting. I was actually on the internet, and you can check this out yourself, there's this science, and it's called reverse 
speech. Right? What they do is they digitally record something and then they play it back. And when they play it back, they actually they say it's the true meaning behind the words. It's actually the subconscious mind. You can hear and you can make out things crystal clear. Like for instance, when George Bush says evil doers, we're going to get those evil doers. He really means. We're the fucking evil doers. Ha 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 ha. Get it up, you. You know. So something like that. What's to that effect? And they heard the Rangers fans, you know, and they were singing uh, at the end of last season when they won the league. I heard this, and this is crystal clear that came out because they were all in the forward speech and all singing, "Champion is champion is away, away, away." But when you recorded that and played it back, what you got was. We made love more times than you, do da, do da. We made love more times than you, do da, do da, do. We sucked more cock, we took more up the arse. We are leaving homos and we love it, oh yes we do. We can't get enough of it, so screw you. We are the biggest homos in fucking Scotland. We are having the Champions League next year to take on other homos. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. It's all a bit mad, as I know, it's all a bit fucking mental as the old football, aye? I'm just jealous because I'm a straight man, I'm very, very straight. That's why I support Hibs, because we never sing championies, fucking championies. We sing, we avoided relegation, avoided relegation, avoided relegation, we only suck four cocks this year, ha 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 ha. And that was only just... <laughs> Okay, you get the gist of it, you get the gist of it, you know. I didn't really suck four cocks. I've scored 15 goals last year, it was 15 cocks I sucked 15, but I didn't want to go into it, you know. Eh, I just saved that for the stadium. What we'll, we'll goes on at Easter Road stays at Easter Road, you can, you can. But you know, talking of this uh, Rangers, you know, we're talking about Glasgow Rangers and I do think they're probably the strangest fans in the world, actually, in the world, bar none. Because they're always going on about this King Billy character, aren't they? It's King Billy this, King Billy that. I tell you what, see this King Billy character, right? He must have been a hell of a player. A fucking awesome player, you know? 300 years after his death, and they're still fucking singing about him. That's unreal. I believe 1690 was his most successful season, you know. I think he won the European Player of the Year that year or something like that. It's unreal. Either, you know, I don't know, either that or they won the Champions League that year, Rangers or something, they were Rangers, I don't know, they were Kings of Europe or something. Uh, either way, whatever one it was, it's even worse than hearing the English drone on about fucking 1966 all the time. You know, at least that's fairly recent history. You're still getting fucking 1690 dragged up all the time, you know? Aye, King Billy. I tell you what, King Kenny's got fuck all on King Billy, you know? Nobody sings about King Kenny at all these days, and he's the greatest Scottish player in recent history. So just imagine how awesome King Billy was, aye. And everyone, talking to Rangers as well, everyone in Scotland, right, they always think there's such a huge difference, don't they? It's such a massive difference between Rangers and fucking Celtic. So do they, you know? Because Rangers have got their ties to the Protestant, you know, King Billy and all that pish, the Protestant and the Queen and, you know, you know? And the Celtic, they've got their ties to the Pope and the Catholic and even more bigger pish with the Vatican, you can? And there's such a huge difference between these two, such a fucking mammoth difference. But see me, I there's about as much difference between Rangers and Celtic as there is between fucking Pepsi Cola and Coca Cola. Alright? <laughs> yeah, I think they both rot your teeth. I do, I fucking do. I really do. You know? You know when I figured that out actually, I was watching a game one time, it was the highlights one time, and the camera before the game, the camera focused in on all the Celtic supporters. And they all look like fucking Shane McGowan. For the Pogues, you came with the big black teeth and that, and the Celtic top, so, hey, 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 hey. I was like, fuck it. And then the camera focused in on all the Rangers fans. And they all look like, oh, fuck. I, I Shane McGowan for the Pogues, hi. <laughs> and I thought to myself, Ken, 
Either these guys drink a lot of cola, right? Or there's something fucking really weird going on in this stadium that I want no part of, okay? Keep that shit away from me. And I just think we take football too seriously is what I'm trying to say, you know? And bring in religion and all that pish into it. But even if it doesn't have religion, I still think football by itself is taken away too seriously. Sorry to say that, Ian. You can't sort of burst that fucking bubble of reality to any football supporter out there that may be watching this, if you've still hung around this long. I can tell you the exact time when I realised, okay, this football lap has went way too far. It was a time, can anyone remember a player called Louis Figo? I think he's still hanging around Inter Milan's B team or something like that. But Louis Figo he used to play for Barcelona, right? And he was awesome. He was fucking awesome, right? Ten times better than Ronaldo, put it that way. So, anyway, he was playing for Barcelona, but he got sold. He got sold to their arch rivals, Real Madrid. Woo! And it was a world record at the time, it was 38 million quid. He got sent, sold for 38 million quid. I mean, what's that all about? You know, they're starving children in the world, ladies and gentlemen. And people are paying 38 million quid for a fucking pussy to kick a fucking bit of leather about a bit of grass. I'm sure we've all had that argument at some point in our, in our lives. But anyway, this game I was watching, I just caught it on TV. Louis Figo was coming back to play at Barcelona Stadium, the new camp, for the first time since his transfer. And it was unbelievable, there was a hundred thousand supporters in the stadium and they're all giving fucking Louis Figo dogs abuse, you know, it's like, fucking Louis Figo, Louis Figo, you've changed the company you work for, you work for a different company now, the dye in your t-shirt is a different colour and because of that, we fucking hate you. Alright, so it's got a bit of the Spanish history and the Catalans and Madrid and all that, but can we leave history behind and evolve as a species, basically, is the point I'm getting at, you know? So anyway, this guy's trying to take a corner kick and there's fucking balls pouring down this guy. It's like, give me a break, okay? I'm just here to kick a ball about a field. It's unbelievable. As, as I was watching it, you know, I thought, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, I thought, I thought Hitler! If he was alive today, if somebody discovered Hitler and put him there and sat him in the middle of the field, you know, there wouldn't be the same, he wouldn't even deserve the same amount of fucking aggro as Louis Figo was getting, you know? And he, he murdered 38 million, you get what I'm saying? He murdered, he killed, wiped out 38 million people, right? And I believe that's still a world record to this day, and he didn't really deserve that much abuse. Although obviously, British and American imperialism is trying to fucking beat that world record but every day that goes by that's no in the news and we're fucking killing people in Afghanistan and Iraq but hey, you can, let's not talk about that yeah. Hitler's the bad guy, the guys that are in charge now, no, they're on your side. Never mind the fact that all the fucking Nazis came out of Germany and Project Paperclip and went straight into the CIA. Let's not talk about that, Ian, you can. It was that bad Hitler lot, we're all done with that. Straight off the football topic a wee bit here, but it, it needed to be said, it needed to be said. You know, why can't we just go to a game, ladies and gentlemen? Why can't we just go to a game all together, right? Support your team. Wear a fucking scarf and drink bovel all you want. Just go to the game, watch the game and encourage the players to play nice football in a nice friendly atmosphere, even have a bit of friendly rivalry, I don't care, you know, as long as there's no threat of violence whatsoever. Is that too much to ask? Really? You know? Or maybe I'm just saying that because uh, sometimes I go and watch Galatasaray play, you know, and uh, to be honest, you're never sure if you're going to make it through the game alive or not. Because <laughs> I'm sitting there and I keep on expecting fucking Satan. I keep on expecting Satan himself to turn up when I'm watching Galatasaray and start getting his fork and fucking jabbing it with me, you can? Jabbing it right into me. Because every time a British team plays in Istanbul, what are the papers full of? What's the, what's the quote? The three word quote every time? Trip to hell. It's the trip to hell, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I will let me tell you something. Turkey is a fantabulous place, alright? If that's what hell is like, then bring it on, you know? There's no BSE of foot and mouth disease or any other pish that goes around Britain, fucking flesh-eating bugs and all the rest of it in fucking Turkey, you know? 
Although I must admit, it does get a bit too hot sometimes. And in that respect, it is a little bit like hell. But apart from that, take your trip to hell and fucking take it to Millwall. I'd rather go to fucking Istanbul than Millwall or Cardiff. Or Leeds in a fucking, if they have no had their, their ride the night before, you can. And the thing is about football, right, another thing that really sickens me about football, there's so fucking much of it on television these days, isn't it? It's just polluting the airwaves, you know, the airwaves are polluted enough without fucking chucking hundreds of football into the fucking mixture. My wife actually, for a change again, my wife actually made a good point the other night there, I was quite surprised. It's one of our better moments. She says to us, you know, I think the reason there's so much football on TV these days is just to distract men from fulfilling their potential. <laughs> they could be cooking, or cleaning, or doing the garden, or using their creative talents to design and build a new fitted kitchen. Or they could even, bear with me in this one night, but they could even be showing some affection to their love-starved wives. <laughs> I was like, listen, will you shut your trap and give me peace, woman? <laughs> I'm trying to watch the game here. Hey, it's very important, you know, it's very important. It's a local derby. We all get an important name. It's a local derby, you know. It's Montrose VR Broth. Hey, <laughs> these people take this very seriously, okay? So just shut up and go and make me a bovril and a fucking mince pie. All right. And football commentators, the commentators, they get on my wick as well, right, the football commentators. And the ones in the radio, they are especially bad, aren't they? The ones in the radio, it's unbelievable. Because you're listening to your driving wherever, and, you, and you're listening to the game, it sounds awesome, doesn't it? It sounds amazing. And then you get home that night and you say, right, I've got to watch that football game. That, that sounded phenomenally good. Let's watch a bit of this action. This is my Saturday night's entertainment. Click it on, yeah. If this is a highlight, it's a fucking pile of shite. This can't be the same game that Chick Young was creaming his pants over this afternoon, you know? Where is the flair and the skill that he was foaming at the mouth about at fucking half past three this afternoon, you know? Christ, my granny showed me her flair and skill than that when they were putting her in her fucking coffin, you know? And all she did was fart. <laughs> I didn't even ken dead people could fart. I was most impressed. I'll tell you what, I'd rather pay to watch that than 22 fucking jumped up arseholes running about. I feel like a bunch of heedless chickens. Hi. <laughs> and it's a, a, the World Cup as well, that's when especially the English commentators, oh my god, in the television, the English commentators of the World Cup, they think they're God. They think they're fucking God. It's like, okay, okay. If England win this amazingly important game of football tomorrow, you just can all take the day off work. Fucking public holiday, I'm just announced it to everyone. Don't expect anyone to turn up tomorrow. England are playing football. If we win, take the fucking day off work. They all think they're fucking gods, you know. What if you don't win the football though? Right, what if you missed that announcement, right? What if you're in the fucking carpet bowls, eh? And you phone up your boss, oh sorry, sorry. Your team's just won the East uh, Scotland Charity Shield, uh, Grant and Elders, aye. Well, no be in to work no more, you've not got a problem with that, have you? <laughs> Get into fucking work ASAP, would be the swift reply. You're starting at fucking 2 o'clock this morning instead of 8 o'clock this morning, just for your fucking cheek, ya bobby. Aye, but no, but football, so it's like God's sport, isn't it? I think we should just burst all the boys. Get a big knife and fucking burst all the fit boys. The stupid new boys especially, and the old gents. Kill the lot of them. Unless people are going to play at the park and get some exercise and sit, instead of sitting on a bit of fucking sofa, stuffing themselves with beer and crisps and nuts and whatever else to watch that, you know, is... Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm just... I would love fit exercise. All these fat guys wouldn't be so fat if they went and played... Fitboard in the park instead of guzzling eight pints before going to watch a game and of pricks. You can what I'm saying in this and run about a field and all that. Can I need to think of a punchline for that? But I'm so angry I can't even get to a punchline in that. And you know, let's 
play football with each other, play sports ourselves. There's a mental concept to be che treasured, treasured, chis whatever the word is. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I see things slightly different, that's what I'm trying to say, maybe I see things slightly different from everyone else. Because Hibs actually last year finished fourth, they had quite a good season, I'm going to finish third, you know. And Greece, Greece won the European Championships in 2004, that was good as well, you know. And I think these things, these kind of things, and hopefully there will be some more upsets at this World Cup, like Switzerland beat Spain 1-0, you know, that was a good result. I, I, I see these things are like divine signs actually, made physical, that now is the time of the good guys. Now is the time of the underdogs to start rising up and reclaiming our power on earth and getting rid of all these FIFA organising bodies and monopolies and every sport, you know, and the corruption that goes on in snooker and tennis and all the rest of them, you know. The good guys, it's the time for the good guys. I've seen an example of this, actually, on TV, oh, six years ago now, but anyway. I've seen an example of this and it was... I was watching this one of those nature programs, right? This is an example of the good guys starting to win. What happened was, there was this group of water buffalo, going by the water, having a little bit of a drink. It was a hot day, who could blame them? A couple of hungry lions came past and said, fuck this, you're feeling a bit peckish, peckish. The last one out of here is our fucking lunch, basically, you know? So they made a charge, they all ran away, a little one got caught. Lion says, get, hey boys, let's get into this shin. They all started getting into it. But some of the other water buffalo says, no, that's not right. He's eating our fucking pal there. Big Jimmy. He's not going to eat Big Jimmy. We're going to stand up for him. So the other water buffalo says, fuck it, come on. I don't know where they got the courage from, but they start charging the lions. The lion says, that's not supposed to happen. That's not supposed to happen. Fucking hell. And they ran away. And then the water buffalo, that was just about to be dinner, rose from its plate, gave the lions a carefree look, and gradually fucking walked away. Go on yourself! Go on yourself, the war buffalo! Take no shit, you know? I mean, you should have seen the look on the lion's faces. <laughs> it was an absolute picture. It was the same look, in fact, as the English players' faces every time they get fucked out the World Cup on penalties, you know? It had that fucking, hold on a minute, that was the supposed to happen kind of look in their face, you know? And uh, it has happened again. We think it's all over. It is now. Bye-bye. Because you won the World Cup in 1966 and it wasn't a fucking goal, all right? It didn't cross the line. So you just didn't really win it. But anyway, if you did win it, we beat you in 1967 and we were the official world champions. So we're claiming that in. That's our only moment of glory, so... Let us have it. Jimmy Baxter doing a few keepy uppies. If you didn't get your history, check it out. Alright? <laughs> you see, when I was younger, I actually used to play for a quite a good football team, a team called Hutchison Vale. Ah, I used to play for Hutchison Vale, one of the best young teams in Scotland. We won the Scottish Cup, in fact. But I didn't enjoy it as much as I should have. I should have really enjoyed that experience, but no, I didn't enjoy it because the manager, he thought he was fucking Alex Ferguson, aye, in his Aberdeen days, aye, he had the red blotchy face, you know, I'm sure he drank about as much whiskey and went through at least twice as much fucking Wrigley's chewing gum as Fergie as well, aye, and he had, he had Fergie's temper is what I'm trying to say to you, that was the worst thing, Ken. Because if we one day went in 5-0 at half time, he'd come into the dress room and start throwing fucking cups and vipto everywhere. Whoa, whoa, you know? It was unreal to duck and dive. There was nothing worse than going out for the second half with fucking big purple stains in your hair, you know? He felt like a right prick, basically. He felt like basically David Beckham must have felt when he got Fergie's flying boot, you know? That was the kind of look we had in our face for the second half. <laughs> Oh, my manager's a fucking ball bag, <laughs> you know? <coughs> you see, I was one of those players that needed some encouragement, you see? I uh, went out there and basically, I didn't need to come at half time and him screaming and threatening to drown me in the fucking bath, basically, you know? He's like, no, no, no! Who the fuck do you think you are, son? Who the fuck do you think you are? Trying to play football with the defence like that, eh? Do you hit your fucking Thad's Beckenbar? Eh? <laughs> I was like, 
His friends bacon bower. <laughs> never mind, never mind. Listen, listen. When I scream hump it, you give that ball some serious lena. Do you understand? <laughs> leave me alone, leave me alone. <laughs> I'm only twelve. <laughs> Just because you've never had a bird, <laughs> you need to come here and take it out on me. That's what I'm sure all these football guys are like, you can, they have to look after a group of 15, 12 year olds because they don't get any other outlet for their frustrations or, I don't know, I guess some kind of sexual enjoyment out of having a winning team. But winning at what cost, ladies and gentlemen, that's what I want to know, winning at what cost. Because the parents on the sideline as well, they're no much better to be perfectly honest with you, you know. That's like, that's it son, that's it. Get into them, get into them. If you're any good, I can start making plans to retire early, you know? So you better start trying real hard, or there'll be no Christmas presents for you this year. I mean, that's really going to make you express yourself fully without any fear, isn't it? The threat of fucking no Christmas presents hanging over your head. Mind you, at least in those days, if you didn't play well and you didn't get your Christmas presents, all you're going to lose is like a Mr. Bubbles an action man in the new bright pink Scotland away strip, you know? It wasn't exactly a lot to lose, but these days it's thousands of pounds worth of computer equipment down the drain if you didn't actually perform, isn't it? You know? Actually, I think that's what's wrong with Scottish football, to be honest with you. All these guys have got potential, you know? They all play really well and they all get their Christmas presents superb, they get their thousands of pounds worth of computer equipment. And then, they get hooked at internet porn, don't they? Hi! <laughs> and football goes way down their list of priorities, you know? That's my excuse for Scotland having a bad team these days, you know? So, let's stop giving the kids the, the, the computer technology to wank themselves shitless, you know? Get them out in the street to kick a ball about, eh? It's a simple solution. That's why all the Africans these days, they're all rising up and they're getting really good at football because there's no computer in every household yet, you know? We already destroyed their minds and take, take over their culture in the past with Christianity so they're all crossing themselves a million times before coming off the park, you know? That's one way of destroying them. Now the next way, let's get the computers in there. Every child, get on laptops, a child, every child in Africa has to get a computer. Let's make this a level playing field. So they're all wanking themselves shitless as well. So it's a 22 wankers on the field. Then we'll see who's the best football team, you know? <laughs> Scotland could shoot up the rankings. We're number one in internet porn and fucking heart attacks, you know? So let's go for football again. Let's get these Africans, let's donate all our computers to Africa. Then, in Brazil especially. Hi. Then we'll stand a chance, you know? Get the orphans to Brazil, get them and let's be, let's be charitable, folks, you know? Mouse nudge, wink, wink. <laughs> You see, I used to actually live in the same street as a football ground. I did. It was the, the, the ground of East Stirlingshire FC. I lived in the same street as that. And now, for those of you that don't know, East Stirlingshire in Scotland, they always finish bottom of the bottom division every year. So, my life was not too affected by huge crowds every week, you know? In fact, half of the people there didn't even know there was a football ground in the street, you know? <laughs> Mind you, that's because most of them were addicted to heroin, <laughs> and they didn't even ken what colour of underpants they had on most of the time, you know? But mind you, I want to hear a bad word said against the heroin addicts, not a single bad word, because uh, many of the time uh, they helped me out after my TV and video got nicked, you know? I don't know who their supplier was, I don't know who their dealer was, but give them a call, any time of the day or night, they'd be around with a replacement model within the hour. Almost exactly, in fact, usually exactly the same as the one that you just lost, in fact. You know, it was amazing, amazing, you know. I did get a, a bit suspicious one time, when they turned up uh, at my door literally five minutes after mine, I just got home and discovered mine was nicked, and I hadn't actually phoned them, you know. And then they explained to me about the heroine's clairvoyant properties, and I was like, oh, right, fair enough, there's your 20 quid. Give me my fucking Hitachi Beta Max video player back there, pal. Thanks very much. You know, it's a rare breed, that. I don't know where you get that in fair this time of night, but you've done a good job. Actually, I thought, her I thought, you said heroin was clairvoyant. I thought alcohol was the only kind of drug that made you psychic, you know? 
Uh, you know alcohol makes you psychic, don't you? You know, it only works if you overdose, so you have to overdose on alcohol. When, once you've totally overdosed, it's like, oh, 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 I, th I think I'm going to be sick. I think I'm going to be sick. <laughs> you always are, you know, as soon as you have that thought, there's fucking no stopping it. You're spewing your load. Aye. But a little bit of advice, actually, I've discovered this one as well. Because I eventually kind of cottoned on or something all right about this, so what I've done was... This is a little tip for you, right? If you have a heroin addict in your street and you're pissed off at them stealing your TV and video, go to fucking Columbia or wherever they make this stuff, this, these poppy fields. Probably the US Marines will have their hands on quite a few of the, the poppy and the opium and the fucking heroin, you know? They're the ones that fucking pack it into the planes to be sent to America and all that, you know? So go to those places. If you get any US Marines, ask them to slip you a couple of poppies and get. Some top quality heroin, you know, some grade A, uncut stuff, the purest of the pure, right? Get a packet and get a used needle as well, but it has to be a used one with somebody with AIDS preferably, you know? Get the two of them, two or three even, two or three needles, put them on top of your TV every time you go out for the night. And then if you come home, what will happen is the guy's coming and nicked your TV and video, says, fuck me, I didn't need the cash, there's the heroin right there. He's, he's an addict, right? He's only stealing because he's desperate, so he can't even wait, so he'll just get the needle, he'll get the fucking thing, he'll shoot up, and if the instant purity of the heroin just say, oh, fuck, I'm going to kill him stone dead straight away, well, at least you've got a backup with the AIDS thing, you know, so maybe that will get him a bit further down the, lo the road, and hopefully one day they'll learn their lesson, you know, and uh, stop dealing with that shit, basically. I'm trying to help them out, you know, I'm trying to give them a big deterrent. No like the news at 10, by the way, who advertises us on a daily basis. You know, look, all those heroin addicts, look how they heat it up on the spoon here and see how they take it out and get all the bubbles out, you know. News at 10 is the biggest advertisement for heroin going. It's no clever drug, let's face it. And the government didn't support, actually, there's, there's been schemes done in the past, right? There's schemes. Where they give all these heroin addicts clean needles and clean heroin and they wean them off over a period of two years and it's a gigantic success. All the robberies in Liverpool stopped when they done this. Then they took the funding out. They went back and fucking started stealing and everything again, you know? So there's dealings going on somewhere along the line. The fact that drugs are illegal, the war on drugs, like the war on terrorism, is a, both a pile of fucking shit. But anyway, sometimes I like to rant, as you know, so... <laughs> It's just, I'm, I'm sick of piss, you know, I'm sick of lies permeating the consciousness of everybody. It's time we fucking rattled these fucking lies out us and dealt in reality so we can move on and evolve, you know. It's, we're not, we didn't, as Bill Hicks says, when we grew our thumbs we didn't need to stop evolving, you know, it's a constant process. Anyway, I had some good memories though, apart from the heroin addicts in that street, I had some good memories while living in that street. For instance, one time... Uh, you know those hangovers you get, the hangovers you get that are unbelievable. You know, it would not matter if somebody attached electric cables to your genitals. There's no way in God's earth can you possibly get out of bed. You know, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm starting work. One time I was there, I was starting work at 6 o'clock, right? Now, granted, I just went to bed at 5 o'clock and I was fucking pissed out my brains, right? And my, the, the guy who was giving me a lift to work, he turned up. And I used to play my stereo in the other room, and the stereo used to turn itself up full blast. He was coming up my stairs going, what the fuck's that noise, what the fuck's that noise? I'm totally comatose, <laughs> stereo at full blast. So needless to say, through no fault of my own, I didn't make it into work that day. I didn't hear the stereo, you know, if I heard that I might have fucking risen and made an effort, but that's the way life goes some of these days, you know. So anyway, around about two o'clock these days, I was feeling a little bit better. I was feeling a bit better, so... I needed to go to the house, basically. I needed to go to the house because uh, the place was fucking rancid, you know? <laughs> With my spewy breath and farty arse, basically. The place was honking. So I thought, where is the safest place in the world to go? Where no one from my work will see me. Because I used to work in a big chemical factory and there's lots of people in the town work there. I know. I'll go to watch East Stirlingshire play. I'll never get found there. Goes to East Stirlingshire's ground. Fucking sports scenes television cameras were there. I mean, that is the typical luck. Oh, that's a story of my life. I mean, they're never at East Stirlingshire. It wasn't as if they were playing fucking Real Madrid and some charity game. They were playing fucking cow and beef. You <laughs> know? 
I was on there and there's about 12 people in the crowd that I'm trying to hide behind one of them. The guy's like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm just trying to hide from the camera there. I don't even want to get seen in national TV where I'm supposed to be at my work, you okay? The guy's like, fuck off and be a man. I was like, alright, fair play, you got me on that one. I'll try being a man for a day, see who that year works out for me. Didn't they work out too well as it happens, you know? Alright, so anyway. That football game was genius though. I've seen what's called a die-hard supporter there. This was the best die-hard supporter in the world. Now, if you don't know what a die-hard fan is, a die-hard fan. A die-hard fan is not somebody who watches the latest Bruce Willis big budget fiasco repeatedly. You know, that's not a die-hard fan. A die-hard fan is a supporter who refuses to kill himself no matter how shite his team is, right? And I've seen one of these guys at East Stirlingshire game, this was quality, this guy was unbelievable. The best, it's far more interesting than the game that I was there to watch, right? This guy had his brown tweedy hat with a feather in it, I might have had a feather, I might know anyways, a brown tweedy hat. Now, every time a decision went against East Stirlingshire, this guy would start going mental, he'd start screaming blue murder! And the official was going, fuck it, hell, everybody! Fuck it, never, 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 you know? It was as if he just found out that the match officials had fucking gang raped his wife just before the game. It's like, fuck it, hell, everybody, Jesus Christ. Then he'd get this brown to the hand, he'd throw it in the ground, like, fuck off. Then he'd start jumping up and down this lovely brown to the hand, and like, fuck it, oh. <laughs> so he'd do that for about two minutes. Then he'd go to and pick up the hand, oh, for fuck's sake. Watch the game. 30 seconds later, oh for fuck's sake, like when he threw the ground, you know, going mental again. As if he just found out that the match officials had stolen cash in his winning lottery ticket, you know? Which, let's face it, these days in this financial climate is even worse than gang raping your life, you know? Fuck it, man, I'll get a brown through the hat back on again. It was incredible. I often wonder, you know, what would David Attenborough have made of this guy, you know? It's like, and here we are today to study the mating ritual of the die-hard Easterlingshire fan. This fan has to work particularly hard at attracting attention to himself because uh, his team didn't score very often, so that limits his, um, his chance of getting a fucking cock up the arse, you know? So what does he do to attract attention? He fucking gets his hand on the ground, but he's going to need to do a bit more than that. He's going to need to take his t-shirt off, get pale blue, and take the rest of his clothes off as well if he was to get some solid cock today, I think, you know? It is uh, amazing, amazing. So that's what you need to do. You need to get all your clothes off, be totally pale blue, and then when your team scores, you're ready to rock and roll. And that's what football is all about. Get a cock up your ass. Eh? Balls, in other words. Coming back to balls. It all comes back to balls for football, doesn't it? So let's move on for the football lap. Let's get down the park. Next time the Rangers and Celtic games on, right? How's about this as an idea? Next time the Rangers and Celtic games on, buy the tickets, right? Buy the tickets. Let's, everyone, all the, the officials, the players, the television cameras, let them all think that we really, really want to go and it's going to be a brilliant game. Then we all get to the stadium, about to go to Tunstall, and we just turn away from you. Then the Rangers and Celtic fans start mixing and shaking each other's hands like, man, you know, how's it going there, son? Aye, I hope you're having a good life and all that. Aye, so do I. I wish you all the best, regardless of your religion. In fact, let's dump these older religions. Let's form new religions based on common sense. How's about that? Oh, that's a, that's a novel idea. Let's get the jackets done. I've got a ghetto blaster. Paul McCartney's pipes apiece. Let's fucking go. Let's get some music on and have a laugh. Oh, let's mix the teams up, the Celtic fans, you give your Celtic top to some of them and they can mix their jerseys up, some Celtic fans wear Rangers tops and vice versa, you know? Is that, is that beyond the realm of, uh, we're going to continue this prejudice and bigotry until the end of time, you know, is that beyond the realms of imagination? Could it possibly happen? And then after the football fans have all said, okay, I've won the Rangers top, fair enough, I've won that, I've scored a couple of those, you've won the Celtic top, great. Put them all in a big pile and set fire to them. And then the cameraman will come outside the ground and go, what's going on? The, the game started, there's nobody in the crowd. Oh look, they're all burning their strips. Shit, I better start looking for a new job tomorrow because nobody's interested in football cameramen anymore because we've evolved beyond it. And the players will take a radical drop in wages and they might start doing something useful in society. Like gardening or, I don't know, 
They're so keen to help with the Africans, let's send them to Africans when they're all doing this charity talk. Oh, look at me, I do a bit of charity now at the World Cup, you know, signing autographs. But let's send them out to Africa and they can help put pipelines in for fresh water for the Africans. Just a thought, ladies and gentlemen. I'll leave you with that one. I'll leave you with that one. Thanks very much for paying attention to my little football rant. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Cheers.